Ladies and gentlemen, this is Breaker, and I'm back with another replay between a member of EXC's Viking team. Hello, what is this? Spawning as our Protoss in the lower right-hand corner, I give you all EXC's Protoss from Viking team, h -Jax. And in the upper left-hand corner, spawning as our Terran in the red trunks, his name is Jun Yuan. Now, something very interesting about this guy's name is, I noticed he's actually Chinese. Um, he probably encountered a slight bit of lag as he was entering the game, as I did notice that he actually had his uh, setup set to Wings of Liberty Pla Classic, and by Wings of Liberty Classic, I mean that, um, in the essence, that he didn't have his SCV set to actually leave from the start and go towards the mineral patches. If you guys will actually remember that from the replay, you guys will see that... Uh, if you guys just go back to the very beginning of this replay, then you would see that the SCVs actually didn't move at all once the game had started. <clears throat> now the whole reason that I decided to take the task of casting this replay is because H. Jack said it was actually rather um, hilarious at one stage, and I'm, I, could, I figured I could use a good laugh and just, you know, see where things go from here. Alright. H. Jack going for a normal opener. It looks like Gen Yuan is also going for a rather normal opener. I do want to stress, however, that I think, given the price of a Korean account for StarCraft 2, as well as the relative geography to it, I would say that, you know, this is back in the day, we're talking like a year ago, even just before StarCraft 2, part of the Swarm was available. Uh, if most Chinese players wanted to get an account for StarCraft 2, on the Korean server, that would be the preferred server for them to play on, simply due to the fact that there's less lag to deal with. I believe they don't have to really use their proxy systems to actually play on the Korean Taiwan server, but I have seen some players use them, some professionals, some big names who I will not mention here. <coughs> but of course, uh, it's entirely impossible that Zhen Yuan could actually just be an American with a Chinese name. Or hell, it could be someone who just put their their name together like this without even thinking. The same way that we have a member of EXC by the name of Pensai. But here we go. Reaper first coming from Genya, and he really wants to get the scout out on his opponent, figure out just what he's up to. And HJAX, I'm a little curious as to what he's trying to do because he hasn't even started with a single zealot yet. That could be a bit of trouble, but the question is here, will he go with a stalker or a sentry? Saving up some gas. No, wait, it's a stalker first. And a Stargate as well. The SCV's gonna come in here and see this, so the question is just how will Jun Yuan respond to this? He didn't even need a Reaper to scout that, so essentially that's like 50 gas wasted. I do want to uh, go ahead and bring to everyone's attention the fact that Jun Yuan has actually gotten started on his second command center, the one with the natural. So he's gonna get that economy up. Reaper is about to pop out just as the first stalker is coming in. And I kind of like that HJX is staying a little calm, but he's got to pull that probe, he's got to pull that probe. Ooh, he lost the probe. Not the end of the world, but of course, you know, these la these losses do kind of stack up over time. I really can't design them myself. Uh, I can't say myself that I would know for a fact whether or not that's a significant loss, but yeah. I'm going to go ahead and kick open the frame rate because I'd like to just see where my FPS is going with this. And it looks like we got a bunker going down at the natural now. Of course, there's no marines ready to, if you will, saturate that bunker. Reaper is right outside the natural, and it looks like we're going to have, if you will, I like to call this the new Protoss Hellion run by, because of course it's capable of killing as many workers as a Hellion. And we also have a second one coming out behind it. The first Oracle is going to, I guess, go, I would imagine going to the main first. It could go to the natural, but of course, eh. Not sure if that would be so many kills. We finally do have the missile turret going down for H Jax. The question or excuse me for genuine. The question is, will he get in time to prevent it? It looks like no, H Jax will not. And ooh, wait, 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 wait. Two Marines versus one Oracle. Oracle wins, guys. Alright, so let's see just what kind of damage we're gonna see H Jax do in the mineral line. It looks like almost nothing. We don't have a missile turret at the natural, so he's actually free to take all the workers he wants out of that. And so far the losses. I want to say for our Terran are going to be not too terribly severe. I, I mean, four Marines isn't the end of the world, but of course it is certainly uh, 
I would say going to add up over time. I'm wondering where that Reaper is. It looks like it was taken out of the picture earlier by maybe perhaps an Oracle over here. No, 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 no. And it looks like, ooh, boy, we do have H-Jax. It's being extremely annoying. He's going to try and... He, he's, he's putting on the air that he's trying to stop his opponent's tech from going up. He's forcing SCVs to be pulled by doing this, which I really like. And what he could end up doing is he could end up actually rotating out his Oracles. One, two Marines fall. Workers, actually, wow, that's that's kind of clever. Very few uh, players, even in Masters League, I think, would actually be that persistent. This is a double Oracle opener, pretty powerful so far from what I see. All right, so I can see what HJAX was doing here. It was actually forcing his opponent to pull some workers to deal with what he's doing. Oh no, he's gonna lose an Oracle though with five kills. Very expensive units at that, but um, altogether, if we just check the losses, it's only been 300 resources altogether. I want to kind of go ahead and see just, you know, what can these guys make? I mean, how much is the price of an Oracle? Unfortunately, it looks like I just can't do that right now with the current ESL Observer interface that I have. And now here we go. The natural, we're going to have two assimilators going down, and... Hello, Robotics Bay, as well as a Robotics Facility coming out. Okay, so the stem pack is almost finished. And now I want to say that we have H Jacks. I want to say in a pretty okay ish leading position. But one thing I think we could see Genuine do to bring himself back into this game would be some very powerful drop play. He's going to have to lower the supply depot. I don't know if he knows or not. This could actually be one of his first games on the NA ladder for all we know. Um. <clears throat> Pylon now going down for Jun Yuan. Or excuse me, uh, for H. Jax, I didn't mean to say that. Behind this, Extended Thermal Lance now being researched along with the first Colossus that's coming out. We need to see, essentially, H. Jax no longer oblivious to this. Excuse me, not H. Jax, but Jun Yuan no longer ob oblivious to this. And that's what I actually like about um, H. Jax's move right now. It's very, very dangerous for his pro, excuse me, for his Terran opponent. Mind this, he's going with a Twilight Council. He's going to, I guess, go with Blink Stalkers. It's entirely possible that we'll see charge loss before Blink Stalkers because, of course, at this stage, what we should be seeing coming from our Terran is not double medevac drops, or not, not double medevacs getting cranked out, but instead um, double Vikings being cranked out to deal with Colossi. And it's... And speaking of out, we do have these marines moving out, and as far as H. Jax is concerned, he's got vision on what they see, but what they see is extremely limited, so it's not the entire map. He just has vision of these units coming at him right now as they are. If he had tanks outside of this sight range, then it would probably be you know, a different story. He wouldn't be able to see it. So behind this we have Jen Yuan going to go ahead and throw it on his 30s, putting down some scans, trying to figure out just what his opponent is up to, and there it is. He can see this much with it. Basically everything inside this line, or what was inside this line. And he wasn't willing to overcommit to any attack. Looks like he's still got a field of vision going down on him. It just disappeared, and it looks like we actually have end vision ready to be casted again by H. Jax. He really wants to know what his opponent's up to. Oh, but the Marines stim up! And just a move underneath him. <clears throat> just a slight mistake by H. Jax, not really paying attention to that Oracle. And it looks like Genuine's coming in here to put the sting on H. Jax. If he can take down that third, that's a big if. Oh, but the probe kills, the probe kills, the probe kills. He got one, he got two, he got three. Those piranhas of C14 gauze rifles, that's just everything that it reminds me of. Medivac is now flying back towards the natural. And it just, it seems stuck there. Okay, well, now it's going to land here, right outside the natural again. Third does survive, but it looks like the Colossus I did get a few good kills out of that. Now we just have Marines and Medivacs for Gen Yuan. That's what I think is a, just a teeny bit absurd. We don't really have extra factories going down. We do have another, ar we do have an armory in production, though. Um, another, oh my god, another scan going down, and uh, this is kind of crazy. The amount of drops that we see going down in this game. If H Jax can hold off all of these, he might be in an okay position. But again, we just have our Terran trying so hard to throw down drops in so many different directions. 
do have Cyanic Storm being researched, which means we are going to have the ability to throw down High Templars in the near future. Also very powerful feedbacks, but hold on just a second. The Photon Overcharge. Oof. Oh no, oh no, the probes, the probes! Is there going to be a drop on the third? No, there's not. It looks like our, our, our Terran is being a little bit reluctant right now. Perfectly alright, perfectly safe. <clears throat> and now's the time to actually start making High Templar because, of course, once the Psionic Storm is finished, there would be enough energy on those High Templar, ideally, to start making, uh, or not, not making, but it, ideally there would be enough energy on those High Templar that once Storm finished, they could cast it ready to go the instant it was done. Yes, Kedarian amulet, amulet removed from the game. So that kind of nerfs Protoss just a little bit more. Let's just see where this game is going to go. Alright, so we got High Templar here. We're going to need some more, too, for room to really, I think, hold off against eh, this much bio. I think he just has to make the make some very, very sick feed... Or not feedbacks, but uh, storm connections go down. <clears throat> now, we do have the forces for Hjax. It's kind of splitting up a little bit. Getting ready to throw off his opponent. And the Mothership Court did fall in the last engagement, is what I'm guessing, between both of these players. So you went ahead and reproduced that ASAP. Ghost Academy now going down, which means we're eventually going to see some ghosts, yes. Um, EMP is very powerful versus Protoss. And, uh, you know, the one thing I wish that more and more Terran players would do is, of course, throw down the nukes. Pull their opponent's attention to this or that. If not, just tax them a little bit more. I mean, it's only 200 minerals, 200 gas, right? Anywho. Looks like Gen Yuan's trying to put some hurt on the third. Not going to work. As we do have, I think, a perfectly divided um, Protoss army. More Warpins coming into the third as well. And that is a scan that picks up on everything right now. Of course, he's scanning himself to make sure that nothing is following him, i.e. observers. And now we have four more barracks being tacked on. Bringing that to about a total of, I want to say... Somewhere around the department of eight-ish barracks, six barracks. And nine barracks altogether. All right, but wait, this could be kind of dangerous for h -jacks. Like, what if... Oh, man, this could be a doom drop. What's going to happen here? Oh, man, that's a lot of gateways. Wait a minute. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's a doom drop. And there's no Photon Overcharge going down on the main Nexus. How is this going to end? What's he going to do? Is he going to snipe the Nexus and get out? It could seriously hinder income, but aside from that, I don't know what to say. Looks like our Darren is going to have a hard time getting out of here, but wait just a minute. Wait, they're all low health. Oh, my God. The feedbacks. The feedbacks. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What was that? Oh, my God, guys. Wait a minute. Hold up. Oh, he just took that many feedbacks and he left the game. Jun Yuan just took that many feedbacks and left the game. Okay, so now we, we... Okay, look at the resources lost right here in the upper left-hand corner of the map. Oh my god. Oh my god. You know what? Let's take that back just again. Just a little bit longer. Okay, so now this is the present army supply. 97 to 105. 95 to 105. The feedback's going down... Holy shit! That took it down by about 40 or 50 all in an instant, guys. Wow. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you guys liked what you saw here today, just go ahead and click on the subscribe button. This has been Breaker. I will see you guys next time.